Hello everyone and welcome to Retro Brick Reviews, where today we'll be taking a look at the Lego Batman movie, set number 70906, The Joker Notorious Lowrider. This set comes with 433 pieces, 3 minifigures, and retails for around $50 in the United States. It released in November of 2016, and without further ado, let's take a look at the minifigures. The first figure we get here is Batgirl, who, just to recap, since I've already reviewed her in a previous video, um, she's probably one of the best figures from the Lego Batman movie lineup. She's, of course, based off of the 1960s TV show, which is, of course, where Batgirl actually made her debut. I mean, at least in terms of the costume, that's what it's based off of, so that's nice, um... You can see that she has double molded legs with some nice printing to get more details on the boots, including some straps. She also has some nice torso printing with some arm printing, again, to just get more detail on there. She has this shiny bat cape. She has the 3D utility belt piece that premiered with the Lego Batman movie sets. And, um, just give me a second. You can see that her accessory is just a yellow Batarang piece, and moving her ponytail out of the way, you can see her back printing, which is basically just a continuation of the front, but I like the design with sort of the, um, the silver around the waist. That's nice. I like it. Nice touch. Um, if you don't know, the ponytail coming off of the mask is a separate piece. And underneath of that, she does have just a normal minifigure face, or, well, I mean, sort of normal. I mean, to get it to line up with the mask, they had to space out the eyes a little more than normal, so it looks a bit strange, but yeah. Mm. This alternate face has the same thing, but for some reason the alternate face does look a bit more normal with the eyes. I don't know, but yeah. So, as I quickly try to put her back together, overall... Batgirl is a pretty cool minifigure and probably one of the best for the Lego Batman movie lineup. And a really great figure to get in this set. So now let's move on to the next figure. The next minifigure we get in this set is the Clown Prince of Crime, the Joker himself. And... To start off, we'll take a look at his accessory, which is, of course, his bang gun. And I believe LEGO's been using this build since, I think, 2006. With, like, the, um, the loud hailer, uh, just a gray rod, and then a flag with a bang sticker on it. Pretty simple, but it looks pretty good. I think it works out. Um, as you can see, in this set, the Joker does not have his long coat on. Instead, he he just has his vest, so um, he has the same leg printing that he has in pretty much all of the sets, but the torso is different because it doesn't include the printing for the coat, of course. And we can just see a bit more of the vest with some of the nice patterns, the skull buttons, also the skulls on the tie, like, it's nicely done torso and captures the idea of the Joker. Um, as you can see, under the vest, he has a short-sleeved shirt on. So he has double molded arms, and you have some printing on those arms for some tattoos for the suits of a card. Here we have hearts and clubs, and here we have diamonds and spades. Here you can just see the back of the vest. And um, the Joker's hair piece, I feel, is a pretty great piece. You have a lot of detailing in there, a lot of flow to it. It looks pretty good, and... The Joker's face is not exclu exclusive. It appears in a couple of other sets, such as, um, it's in the Scuttler, and, um, I think it might be in one other, but don't quote me on that. But, um, and if you reverse that, he just has 
an alternate face where he has this wide, slightly sarcastic looking smile. It would definitely very jokery though. So yeah, that is the Joker in this set. He's a pretty great figure, and um, he's not exclusive, but seeing as how the only other set he comes in is the Joker Manor, for most people he might as well be exclusive to this set. So yeah, pretty great Joker to get here. The third and final minifigure included in the set is Harley Quinn, who, like the Joker, also appears in the Joker Manor, but besides that is exclusive, and to start looking at her, you can see that her accessory is this nice printed baseball bat. As you can see, it has the standard white handle, but now the, um, the actual, the bat itself is red with some printed white diamonds on it. So that's nice, but getting that out of the way, you can also, well, sort of see that Harley has another accessory, those being a pair of roller skates, one red, one black. Yeah, but I'm taking a look at the figure itself. You can see that starting off, the hair piece is a great new double-molded piece to have the red and black hair. And I'm just... Looking at that all around, you can see that at the back it's a very clean division, but of course at the front you have some of the, the bangs things folding over to the alternate sides, so that's nice, and um, I'm glad that it's not fully symmetrical, like, you can see that the, like, it doesn't go down as far on one side as it does the other, it's nice. And also it's good how for stability, the pony t or pigtails actually do attach to the sides of the head but not in a super awkward and notable way it's it's a very well designed piece but um you can see that harley quinn's face is pretty nice um i think it does a pretty good job of capturing the character um yeah i mean the and the hair piece does help a bit with that by giving her a bit more of a wild look covering up a bit of the mask but Personally, I much prefer the alternate face we get here, which is this very not amused expression, and I feel so this one really sells Harley for me, even more than the former. This is great. Um, You can see her torso print, where she has the sort of a, sm the, the, a shirt that says smiles on it, as well as a spiked collar. And you can see that on top of that, she's wearing a jacket that is, of course, split between black and red. Since she is Harley Quinn, of course, so she has that sort of split it design with the red and the black, obviously. And that jacket is just draped around her thin figure. You can see sort of the curves towards the bottom of the torso. On the arms... You have some printing for, well, it's supposed to be a white stripe, but it ended up being sort of pink because it's printed onto red. But then on top of that, you just have a couple of black diamonds, or, well, a few. A couple is only two. Then on this arm, you have a white stripe and some red skulls. The leg printing is pretty, uh, probably the worst part of this figure, but you have her belt printed on her hip piece. And then on the legs, you have a couple of knee pads, a couple of black di- Why do I keep saying a couple? A few black diamonds on her red leg. And then you have, I mean, I'm guessing that the, that the white areas are supposed to be exposed skin, but since this one ended up being rather gray and this one is rather pink, it doesn't work out too well. I kind of wish that they just skipped having the exposed skin because it doesn't work too well. But you can see that there is also a bit of nice printing on the sides of the legs to sort of get across the idea of her very short skirt and then the long and then the tall boots. That detail is on both sides, and I think it works out pretty well. I, I feel so Harley does look Harley like the skin does look pretty good from the sides. It's really just from the front that it doesn't really look too much like exposed skin because the color isn't too well since the um since the print is going on the part of the leg where it goes from the rounded part to the flat part there's a bit of a cutoff line there and i mean from the front the print doesn't even really make it look like a skirt i mean it's weird i don't know why the front print 
it doesn't look too good, but the side print really does. It's a great print on the side, and overall, aside from the little bit of exposed skin on the legs, this is a great Harley Quinn figure and one of the best. But that's enough of, with the figures in this set, now let's move on to the build itself. In a set called The Joker Notorious Lowrider, it shouldn't be too much of a surprise to learn that it is the build of the set. So yeah, it's a very oversized but very nice looking purple lowrider. And starting off at the front, you can see that you have this nice chicken hood ornament, golden chicken. And then you can see a couple of headlights and some nice shaping at the front. And to sort of have the, um, almost like a W shape, like that's not, obviously not what was intended, but that's sort of what it comes out to look like, just very roughly. But it has definitely some nice slopes to it. You have a nice grill at the front and a Joker license plate. Um, the hood is quite long, and you can actually see that right in front of the windshield, you do have a couple of wipers, which are just represented by a couple of lever pieces. But those can be posed if you want to. And you can see that here we have so several um four golden pistols used as exhaust pieces, and that is on both sides. Um, give me a second. I accidentally picked it up by the wrong place and broke a piece off. But anyway, um, but over on this side, you can see you also have this nice air horn, which is a simple build. You just have a red bucket at the front and a black ball at the back. Um, you can also see sort of on the bottom how you have these golden larger exhaust pieces. Yeah, but um, going to the going further to the back, you have what I'm guessing are sort of to be simulated door handles, but of course the doors on the model don't actually open. So yeah. Then moving along to the back, you can see that on the back section you do sort of have a roof. Although it re it really only covers up the stereo, but you do have a a of course a back piece of window glass. Then turning this all the way around to the back, you can see another bumper with a ha 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 license plate and a couple of brake lights, as well as a spare tire on the back of the trunk. And um, I I think it's pretty neat how the tires do have the little um the little one by one flat round gold piece to cover up the technic hole um personally i think it would have looked a bit better if they've they'd used a two by two radar dish to cover that up but i mean still having the one by one there is better than just having it be completely open so i'll give them like half a point for that and well one of the features of the set is that the trunk can open but i'll get to that in a minute because we because that it sort of coincides with a with a feature on the interior of the vehicle. So moving to the interior, here you can sort of see at the front you have a steering wheel as well as the glove box. You have the gear shift shift level lever the gear shift lever in between the two seats. You can see that on those seats you have a couple of nice prints. On the bottom you have a one by two for some zebra stripes, and then on on the backs you have a two by two print with some more zebra stripes. And of course those are just studded, so of course all you have to do to get a figure in is just sit them down, maybe put their hands up a little, and just attach their left leg to the two studs there. You can fit two figures in there, and um... Let me just try to get Harley in there as well to show you. There you go. Um, she can be a bit harder to get in. You do have to raise the arms up quite a bit on these guys to get them to actually attach to the seats. But with a bit of hard work, it can be done. See, and um, here, if you remove the back roof section, you can see here you have a nice sticker for a stereo as well as some some nice printed one by one round black tiles with some speakers on them. You have a couple of exposed blue Technic pins. 
And basically what that goes into is if you open up the trunk, you can see in there you have a couple of spring shooters facing towards the rear. What you do is you just push back on those blue Technic pins or push down more accurately and it'll launch out the shooters. Pretty simple feature, but pretty nice. And it is, it's not very common to see vehicles with the spring loaded shooters facing towards the rear. So it's an interesting idea and it's good for chases, of course. And the other feature is something that I probably should have mentioned at the start because I've already demonstrated it a few times, but obviously this is a low rider, so you have some very nice suspension here. Um, you can see it's just done with some rubber bands and some Technic, so like this is the base design where it's up off the ground, but you can push it down to be a low rider, and I think this looks quite a bit better. And I mean, of course, you can just lean in the front and just have that with the backup. You can lean down the back and have the front up. You can just, you can sort of lean in to one side like that. Can you just lean to one wheel? Um, You can sort of even just lean to one wheel, yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can do with the suspension. And it is a pretty fun design. Um. So yeah, that's really all there is with the lowrider. Only a couple features, but you can fit two figures in there, so that's nice and... I mean, really, if you wanted to, to get Batgirl in on the action, all you would really have to do is just attach her hand onto the bar there on the side and have it be like she's just holding on for dear life while trying to attack the or apprehend the Joker. And yeah, one more thing. This is probably obvious, but Harley can't fit into the seat with her roller skates, so you do have to remove them first, but luckily... I'll, they, you do get a storage space for them because while the trunk has very little space in the in it, you can just attach her skates onto into the trunk, whether you want to attach them onto the studs like I'm doing, or just sort of just leave them sitting in there. So, yeah. So, overall, that is really all I have to say about the Joker's Notorious Slow Rider. But before we go on to the final verdict, let's take a look at the set's box. So here you can see the front of the box for the set. It's a nice $50 box size. And um, here on the front you have an action shot of Batgirl leaping towards the lowrider, while the Joker, Joker laughs and Harley deflects the battering. It's a pretty nice design, and on the left side you can also see the info. For the set in the bottom right features the three figures. On top you have an action shot for the three minifigures in battle and an actual size reference featuring Batgirl. And then turning the box around to the back you have another action shot with Batgirl being attacked by the rear defenses. And here you can sort of see an explanation of a couple of the play features included in the set, so yeah. Pretty simple box, but pretty nice. And overall, I guess that's something that could be said about the entire set. It's pretty simple, De definitely not one of the most complex LEGO sets ever, only a couple features and a pretty simple, straightforward build. But it still ends up looking very nice. And being fun to play with, you get some great minifigures, even if none of them are exclusive. And I think it's a bit odd that this set is one of the few in the line not to feature Batman. Seeing as how this is the ma the main set for the Joker, you'd think they would want to include Batman as well. But I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe they just... I, maybe they... I, I'm guessing that they probably wanted kids to get this and the Batmobile to sort of have a chase scene. So maybe that's why? I don't know, it does feel a bit odd, though. And um, it is a bit disappointing that after the Joker Manor set, none of the figures are, are still exclusive to this set. But yeah, I mean, I do feel as though this is probably one of the better LEGO Batman movie sets. And um, honestly, I think the biggest problem with the set isn't anything to do with the set at all. It's due with the fact that this vehicle was barely in the movie, which is a problem with most of the Lego Batman movie sets. Like, uh, around... Well, I don't want to say around half, but a huge part of the movie 
movie doesn't take place in Gotham City, and most of the villains are, like, they're there or for a few parts, but the majority of the sets, all the villain vehicles, are only there in the first, like, couple of scenes. And, like, I mean, this one's only in the movie for about a minute. So, I mean, that's the reason why this set and a lot of the other Batman movie sets aren't selling too well. Because they're, they're in the movie for such a short amount of time that no kid's going to walk into the store and say, Wow, I want that set because of it being in the movie. So I guess it's a good thing for this set that it also has appeal and that it just looks good. It has some good figures of some important characters from the movie. So, yeah. Would I recommend this for $50? I, I think that's a fair price. I mean, I would prefer to let it go down because this is just riding the line of acceptability. Like, I, I feel as though, like, this set is worth $50, but just barely. And I would recommend waiting to, waiting to see if it goes on sale. Because, I mean, again, th this set is selling more... Is one of the better-selling sets from the, from the Lego Batman movie wave, but... It's still a, a rather slow-moving product, but yeah. Overall, that's really all I have to say about this set. Pretty great set, pretty great figures, mediocre price-to-part ratio. Overall, it's alright. So, thank you all so much for watching this review video, and I will see all of you in the next one. Farewell.